<laughs> hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about 802.1x port security and I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi to demo it. So let's get into it. Okay, I'll go through the setup first. Um, I've got a screen capture capturing a bunch of consoles which I'll explain as I go along. Uh, and this is the physical setup that I've got. Okay, here's the Raspberry Pi, and I've got this network connector here just going into my other network so I can control it and show the consoles, but that doesn't really come into what I'm going to demo here. The real point of this exercise is this cable here, which is going into the switch, and you can see that's in there at the moment. Okay, so there's three components that make up this system. You've got the supplicant, which in this case is the Raspberry Pi, that's the one trying to get access to the network. You've got the authenticator, which is the switch in this case. It's the one that either lets through traffic or not. And then you've got the authentication server. Now for the authentication server, I'm using Radius on um, PFSense, okay? So they're the three aspects, your supplicant, authenticator, and the authentication server. So what I've got on the screen here is on the top left, I'm actually doing a packet capture of the authentication server, the Radius server, which isn't doing much right at the moment. And this capture at the top right is on the Raspberry Pi on this interface that's connecting, as I, as I said before. And on the bottom right is just a ping, which will start pinging once the uh, port allows traffic through. Okay, so to start the process off, the client, when I start the WPA supplicant program, it will send an EAP message, that's extensible authentication protocol. And it will say to the switch, hey, you know, here I am, let's, let's do this. Not exactly like that, but you get the point. And the switch will say, well, hang on, who are you? And then it'll say, okay, my name's this. And then it'll, the switch will go, okay, let me check on that. And the switch then passes up to the radius server using the radius protocol, which is just UDP. And then what will happen is a TLS tunnel will get set up between the um, authentication server and the supplicant. And what will happen is the credentials will be passed along that. It'll be EAP between this Raspberry Pi and the switch, but then it'll be radius between the switch and the radius server. Okay, so we'll have a look at the WPA supplicant config and see what we're dealing with here. Now you can see that the key management is 802.1x, which obviously that's what we're all about here. And the EAP type is PEEP. Now, there are a number of different EAP types. You can use uh, certificates, you can use password, you can use other less secure ones that you don't really do these days. For this, I'm just gonna use PEEP, which is a, a password-based thing. You can set it up pretty secure if you want with certificates where the client's got a certificate and the server's got, well, the server always has a certificate, um, but it has to trust the server certificate and the server has to trust the client's certificate to make a really, you know, we trust who we're dealing with here before we can let it on. I'm just using PEEP at the moment because it's, it's easy enough to show you this demo with. Now the next one is identity, which in this case I've called yellow. Now that's the true username of this client because it's a yellow Raspberry Pi. So on the radius server, I've set up a username called yellow, which will succeed when there's also with that. But the next line here, this anonymous identity, you can call that whatever you want. I've just called it some color, it doesn't really matter. That doesn't exist on the radius server. Okay, when the authenticator, in this case the switch, first asks the supplicant, the uh, Raspberry Pi here, its identity, uh, when it passes that back, that's all in the clear. So I just pass back anything called some color because that doesn't go up to the radius server, that just sort of starts this. The radius server will ask, once, once it's established, then it will ask the identity, and that's when I'll give it the true identity, which is yellow, and that does exist on the radius server. Okay, the next is just the, um, you know, the password, and oh, again, the password and the protocol we're using. Okay, so that's within the TLS tunnel. Okay, so the outer type is PEEP to set up that tunnel, and the inner, inner is PAP. Okay, so that's the config for WPA supplicant. So what I'll do now, up the top left, as I said, I'm doing a, um, a packet capture of the radius server, what hits the radius server. And over here, I'm looking at the, um, the Raspberry Pi. You can see already, just before I do this, you can see that DHCP is struggling. It's trying to get an address. It's trying to do DHCP, but it's not getting anywhere. Okay, it's getting no responses. Because at the moment, I haven't authenticated to the the authenticator, the switch. So it's blocking everything. All you can see are these EAP packets. Now they're coming from the switch. Every now and again, it's just sending an EAP packet, uh, an EAP frame, I should say, uh, but nothing's, nothing's really happening. 
I'll just show you manually trying to get a DHCP address on the client. So if I run the DHCP client, you can see in the packet capture up here, it's, the request has gone out, but um, there's no response, okay? This EAP's just coming from the switch, but nothing's really happening. So there's no response to the DHCP client. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll run the WPA supplicant and see what happens. Okay, a lot of things happened. Now if I run the DHCP client again, there it is. You see we've got the response, and I can also... Uh, ping the gateway now. So now the port is open for traffic from that device. So I've done a packet capture of those and we'll have a closer look. At a glance you can see though there are a lot of EAP, pack EAP packets here and a radius to the radius server and you can see the last one was the accept when the radius server said yep all's good this thing's allowed in. So I'll have a look at the Wireshark captures now and see how that looks. Okay I've got the two packet captures open side by side here. So I've got the radius one on the left and the EAP one on the right. So the radius was between the switch and the radius server and EAP was between the switch, the authenticator and the supplicant, the Raspberry Pi. So what have we got? Well I'll start with the EAP on the Raspberry Pi side. Let's just get this a bit bigger. You can see what happened at the start. Okay when I ran the WPA supplicant this is what happened. The Raspberry Pi, as you can see, sent an EAP start message. Okay, that's all it's all here for 802.1x start. Right, we're off. Next thing that happened was the switch said, well, who are you? It requested the identity. Radius server hasn't come into this yet. So that identity responded with, remember the uh, sum color? That wasn't the one that was yellow, which is the real one, just this thing called sum color. And what that did was kick off this process to start the EAP tunnel. Okay, now as you can see here, we've got all this TLS stuff, TLS, 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 and all the typical things, you know, certificate swapping, client key exchange. This is to set up that TLS tunnel, I said. So it does a whole bunch of that, and then once that's set up, from here on, it's all encrypted. So I can't see anything more on this side, okay? It's just, it's just TLS stuff. You can't really see anything, it's just, it's just encrypted data, okay? Right up until the last message, when it's finished, so I can send back the success. Okay, and there it is there, success. So that happened on this side of the whole process. If I have a look on the other side between the, the switch and the radius server, well, all you can see really is a lot of requests and challenge. That's the back and forth saying, oh, obviously setting up the, um, the TLS tunnel, but also the challenges to get its username and password that I put in, which was yellow. And at the end of it, same sort of thing. At the end of it, when it's all happy, the radius server sends back success or well, accept. Okay, it sends back accept from the radius, the authentication server, comes back to the authenticator here, and this passes back the uh, success to the to supplicant. And at that point, this thing's open and ready for business. Now that'll stay like that until a couple of things happen. You could uh, pull the cable out, and when you plug it back in, you'll have to do that again. Uh, which you usually have set automatically. Or the other thing is the authenticator could uh, challenge it every now and again if it wants. They usually have some sort of time period. You might want to do a re-authentication, okay? But there it is. Now, if I... I've got a ping going through it at the moment. So if I... I'll just turn the supplicant off and just unplug it. And you'll see the pings have stopped. Okay, we're not pinging anymore. But as soon as I plug it in, it won't come back. The pings aren't there because... Now, as I said, it hasn't authenticated. So I've got to authenticate again. So when I uh, authenticate again, you see the process, it's authenticated, and the traffic is flowing. Okay, so that's a quick overview of 802.1x port security. You've got three parts to it. You've got the supplicant, the authenticator, authentication server. The comms between the supplicant and the authenticator is EAP, which is Extensible Authentication Protocol, and the comms between the authenticator and the authentication server is RADIUS, okay? In an upcoming video, I'll show you the wireless version of this, which is 802.11i, where basically the big difference is the authenticator becomes an access point instead of a switch, but the rest is pretty much the same. So until then, take it easy, and I'll catch you next time.